Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I was taking notes about all the connections uh, between these different presentations, and then I said, I'm going to be standing between people and a more lively discussion. So I'm not going to go into all of this, but I do want to take a minute to really note the importance. Global Water Partnership has espoused the involvement of women at all levels from its founding, but that hasn't always been given the same level of attention. And I really want to congratulate you, GWP, for pulling this together, and Mercy in particular, the, this um, session coming together so nicely. Um, and all the, everybody, we've had a lot of discussion going on as background on this, Barbara and others. So thank you. I sort of felt like what I was doing was a little bit of an outlier because I'm talking about a Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index, which actually doesn't deal specifically with water. But maybe that outside perspective is useful. This index was a US, so to give a little bit of background, Ilaria talked about how the FAO State of Food and Agriculture index, uh, report last year really brought home the message that women are very uh, important in agriculture. And a lot of donors are starting to take that much more seriously. USAID, in their large Feed the Future initiative, said um, inclusive growth was a requirement. They want to be really monitoring uh, results, but if you only monitor the results that are easy to measure, like um, productivity growth, you might actually have a negative effect on women. And so they really wanted to have a, a, an index where, or something to measure in terms of women's empowerment. And so they came to IFPRI, um, International Food Policy Research Institute, because we've done a lot of research on gender equality and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, which does the multidimensional poverty indices, asking us to do this, this index. Um, and then there are some other applications. It's going to be used as, to assess the impact of Feed the Future in 19 countries. But it's also, we're getting a lot of interest in using this from other agencies um, and NGOs in their agricultural programming. The index, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about it, but there are basically five domains of empowerment. Uh, and then there is a gender parity index. And what that, the index, a lot of the gender indices are based on secondary data. Women parliamentarians, um, women's education ratios, which are important, but aren't really that related to the experience of, of women and men in agriculture. So this, this um, index requires collecting new survey data. And one of the interesting things about it is that it's not a household survey, but it's an intra-household survey. You actually have to ask the questions of women and men separately. Um, and so that's, that's one of the important things. It was piloted in Uganda, Bangladesh, and Guatemala to compare, we wanted three very different kinds of, of contexts to test this out in. There are <clears throat> the five domains of empowerment. Then there are 10 indicators, um, so between one and three indicators per domain. I'm not gonna go into all the indicators, but the domains are are women involved in making productive decisions in agriculture? Do they have control over resources, land, other assets, and credit? Do they have control over income? Do they have leadership opportunities? 
and uh, do they have, have adequate time, either reasonable workloads and leisure. So we tested this with a survey, but then we also cross-checked it with qualitative work and particularly case studies to see what women and men themselves defined in terms of empowerment and to kind of test the way you get the more of the story of a woman um, and then test it against her score. A woman is considered empowered if she has adequacy in 80% or more of the weighted indicators. And then the gender parity index is the percentage of women who are either empowered or if they're not empowered, they have, they have the sta same parity uh, empowerment status as, their, as the principal man in the household, which is, it's often husband and wife, but it might not be. It might be a mother and son, for example, if they are both adults. Um, so that we can look at this empowerment gap. And then, for example, Lillian here um, has, from Uganda, has an empowerment score of 83%. She, she had adequacy in all except she didn't have access to or participate in decisions on credit, and her workload was um, very high. Um, Seema, this woman in Bangladesh, would be considered disempowered um, because she did not have any of the leadership, um, her leisure was not adequate, and um, again, no credit. And she does not have parity with her hus husband. Um, the, the, the use of this is that, for example, in Bangladesh, these are the proportion of people who, uh, of women who lack adequacy in the different domains. Well, group membership jumps out at you as the high area where women are lacking adequacy. Um, and credit is another big area you would want to, if you're wanting to really uh, empower women, these are two areas that you work on. Um, and you can compare what are the areas of inadequacy of women and men. And um, in this case, um, men are also uh, lacking. Um, and those would, would be the areas you would want to intervene. In Uganda, um, women were more disempowered than men in every domain. In Bangladesh, men were all more disempowered in certain domains as well. So you can use the index to understand the major areas of disempowerment, show how to improve women's empowerment, and track changes over time to monitor progress toward gender equality. And that's what the theme of this session is. So um, in the discussions back and forth, this challenged me to think about, OK, what would that look like in water? Um, first of all, this is a quantitative indicator, and I think the, and it's an outcome indicator. I think the AMCOW, stra AMCOW strategy and others also point to the need for process and qualitative indicators. Um, the other thing is when you think about it, what level of empowerment are you talking about? At the individual level or at the community level? Would you have the same domains of empowerment for water as for agriculture? Um, and would you measure um, the gender parity? Would you measure the same things for women as well as men? Um, and Barbara, I think, had some very good points about, about that issue. Um, so what might, I, I did the mental exercise of thinking about what might these five domains of empowerment uh, mean in, in the waters, what kinds of, tweaking of the indicators might we do? I think overall the five domains are still important for water as well. So uh, production, here it's really about involvement in decision making. So are women involved in different water-related activities and uses? 
And do they have decision making related to each of these uses? So Barbara pointed out you have lots of different um, uses of water. Are women at least involved in decision making around a certain number of those uses of water? Um, then the resources. Um, in, in the Women's Empowerment in Ag Index, we're talking about ownership and decision making power over productive resources. In water, we might look at water-related infrastructure as well as rights to the water itself. We might focus more on that instead of just the broad set of assets that we do in the, in the um, Ag Index. Income, um, we, look, we are looking at sole or joint control over the use of income and expenditures. Here, I'm not as sure what the link would be for water, but maybe we just do look at control over income. It certainly is relevant for, for water because if women do not control incomes, they may not be able to make payments for, for either water supply and sanitation or for irrigation. And we heard about those decision-making issues. Leadership, this one's a really clear match. Um, uh, we would. I think women's participation in groups is important. As Barbara said, you know, both water supply and sanitation as well as irrigation groups. Um, what, what is women's participation there? And how comfortable are they speaking in public? Although if you were doing a, a water index, you might focus more on whether women feel able to make changes in water-related infrastructure and institutions in terms of do you feel like you could speak up and make a difference in that area. Now time is one of the big ones where I think this is really relevant for agriculture because um, looking at the extent of of workload and labor burdens for both productive and reproductive tasks, um, and the satisfaction you have with the time available for, for leisure. A lot of times when you bring water closer to the household, it doesn't show up as increasing incomes, but it may be relieving women's workloads so that they can do adequate care for their children or just not be as stressed. So this, including this in an indicator, I think would be very useful for water as well. So those are some of the examples I'm putting out there, but I hope we have some more discussion about what are the relevant indicators that we could be talking about. Thank you. <laughs>